And so I think uh, based on their level of interest and it appears excitement at, uh, at meeting me, um, I think it'll be, uh, it'll feel very comfortable, I'm sure. They'll be, and, and she's, she's affectionate as I am, so I, I said, you know, I said, we're gonna hug first time, there's no question about that. And so, um, you know, and I wrote a blog about it on, on our Trailblazers uh, um, website. And I think I said, you know, I don't know if I will ever call them mom and mom and dad. I said, but they are, and and uh, they don't have to replace the uh, people that were the great adoptive parents that raised me. Um, but but at this point in my life, especially with those parents not being here anymore, and I was raised an only child, and I always uh, was thankful I had friends that welcomed me into their homes on holidays and. I always loved uh, being around big families and apparently up until they had a great grandmother pass away last year, there's nine generations of kids in this family, so, so there's clearly plenty of, plenty of uh, people to go around and it uh, sounds like they all welcome new people into the fold and clearly I have an interesting story that ties and, and I guess as my sister who's alive said to her mom just the other day when she heard the news, she said, you know, it's great. This isn't a half brother. This is a brother. And so, so she said, I'm, and she even told her mom, she said, you know, tell him, you know, not to wait too long. I mean, I want to talk to him as soon as possible. I stay at a hotel, but, but I'm only coming to see you guys. So whatever you plan will be fine. And, uh, and so I'm sure it'll be, uh, it'll be emotional, but, uh, but I think, I think all, all good and all very comfortable and, and, um, and very, relaxed I think because it just everything so far feels very very right which is probably more than, than I could have even hoped to, hoped, to, hoped to feel. Yeah it's interesting because I my adopted parents uh, I haven't had uh, one of them for quite a while I, I had a, a dad who passed away when I was a sophomore in high school and a um, excuse me a freshman in high school and a mom who passed away when I was a sophomore in college so I haven't had a parent since 1981 um, but I know I always knew I was adopted and I didn't necessarily think there was anything uh, odd or different about it. So I'm not sure that I ever felt something was missing that I needed to replace as soon as uh, both my parents passed away. And clearly that must have been the case because uh, it was a long time before I really gave it some serious consideration. And I think part of it was I was a little daunted by the, the challenge of how do I go about uh, finding out more information, uh, if I get a name, what do I do then? And, so I don't know if it was turning 50 earlier this year, but, but something seemed to motivate me a little more this particular year. And I always knew she was a teenage girl, so that confirmed it, that she was 17 at the time she had me, and my father was 23. So looking at ages, I thought, you know, she'd be 68 at the oldest now, and with as long as women live, good chance she still might be alive. But I still wasn't sure what to do, uh, even with this information. I, I mentioned what was going on, and I said, does anybody have any experiences with good or bad adoption search agencies because I think I'd like to maybe pursue now trying to find if, uh, information about my mother, more so than just the name. And so sure enough, the Blazer fans being the great people that they are, they, uh, I gave up my Twitter address and they had a bunch of different suggestions and one of them was um, the adoptionspecialist.com. My birth mother had a different last name and uh, she was married and her husband was still alive and I noticed that shortly after having me at the age of 17 that she had two daughters at age, uh, at age 19 and age 20, and they had the same last name as her husband. So I, as I was reading the report, I was thinking, hmm, you know, I wonder. And, and I, didn't, I didn't say out loud what I was thinking, but I had an additional thought that I wasn't sure I would have. And she came to the phone and said hello, and I said, Barbara, and uh, she said yes. And I said, uh, this is Brian Wheeler, and I, I didn't know if my name would mean anything to her, and she didn't say anything when, when I did, so I kept going, and I said, uh, I recently saw a copy of my birth certificate, and it had your name and your signature on it, and um, I have reason to believe that you're my birth mother. And she said, what? And I, and I, I repeated it, and she said, uh, started asking me questions. Where were you born? I said, Chicago, Illinois. When were you born? January 18, 1962. Where did you grow up? And I said, uh, Chicago, I said, well, we moved to L.A. when I was two months old. And she said, that was what I was looking to hear. She said, well, I guess I am. Do you know the whereabouts or uh, have you spoken at all over the years to my birth father? And um, she chuckled and she said, well, um, very soon I'll be celebrating my 50th wedding anniversary with him. He's my husband. 
So not only did I find her, but I found him. I found out of her two daughters, one unfortunately passed away uh, in her sleep, uh, 43, very healthy three years ago, but the other's still alive and has uh, had three sons, one passed away, but has two sons still. So, um, so I found uh, a mother, a father, a sister, and two uh, nephews, as it turns out. Into the arms of another.